Hello, welcome to Machine Learning 24-7 Self-Monitoring IT. My name is Mike McHale, and I'm enthusiastic about the data-centric systems that would allow us to move forward on the path towards self-driving, self-healing, almost everything. Today in this world now, we can get large amounts of data from so many different sources about many different things. And if we try just to visualize this data on screens everywhere, we're gonna pretty much run out of the number of eyes and brains that can actually look at all this data coming in and make sense of them. So what we do now is that we build these systems that if we, uh, I, I call them data to machine learning production lines, where we have here, if we look at from the left to right, we have the data generating sensors and equipment and uh, things that can uh, send us information about performance indicators, uh, state uh, tables of data, uh, temperature, locations, uh, trading, a uh, large number of things. Today we, can, we have also the means to securely transport this data to collection uh, uh, points or receivers. Those collectors and receivers can be either in the cloud at some central loc location, or they can be at the edge, they can be on premise, or they can be close to where the data is being produced. From there, we can put the data on buses or pipelines that would take that data to be fed into time series databases. So in time series database, we get each record to be timestamped and saved in the database and ready for uh, efficient and effective retrieval from there. From there, we can either visualize, as we have seen in the previous picture, uh, screens, tables, graphs, lines, or uh, as we're gonna see here, we can get machine learning models to feed on the data uh, as they come in. And these machine learning models are gonna first look at the historical data, so how things used to look like. And from that, they can learn what the normal usually looks like for this day of the week, uh, day of the month, uh, time of the day, all the stuff with all the factors that are factoring in. And with that, whenever uh, these machine learning models run every few minutes, uh, whenever they are predicting something that looks very far from the norm then, um, or from reality, then that's when there is an alarm that there is a potential anomaly here. Well, we look at the specific use case here uh, that we're using for this example or demo where we have uh, business applications that are housed in two data centers. That's typical for res resiliency, uh, for a, a trading enterprise. <clears throat> and for that enterprise, we take a subset of systems here, which is actually four of their trading locations. And uh, these uh, four trading locations reside in two different time zones, but the applications there are relying heavily on actually the processes and performance applications in their two data centers. And now when we take this data in and we start to visualize a subset of it, uh, like on this graph here that represents uh, uh, some activity uh, for the top two rows here, it's about the, these two data centers, then the bottom four about one, one for each of these uh, trading locations, uh, we're going to see that uh, although things might look like so fuzzy, uh, that that's, uh, uh, that that's how life is in real life, uh, we see that things would tend to look uh, like uh, take some kind of a form of a pattern, plus or minus, during the trading hours. Um, and another different scale or pattern uh, during the off hours. And we see also that uh, it looks like we have larger amounts of activity uh, that are taking longer to perform during uh, weekend days, Saturdays and Sundays. And actually on Saturdays, there's even uh, much larger amounts of activity here. So let's see in, in, um, in a running model how things would look like here uh, let me switch to that and, and show you how the model is seeing this. So in, in this model here, what's happening is that uh, 
as you see, when the model started on this logarithmic scale, the one here on this diagram up at the top, uh, when started here, the error rate was relatively so high. And after uh, some training and training thousands of times on different large sets of data, as we're going to explain, it started to, to have some predictability of uh, much lower uh, root mean square errors for what's happening here. And then we see that it looks like some event did take place. And now the error rate did shoot up high, even, even to before uh, or higher than the level to before the, the, that newborn uh, model at that point in time did start to learn the, uh, the pace of business here. But then at the bottom uh, graph here, we're going to see on the normalized root mean square error here. We see after some uh, rough start here for some period of time for a new model or a newborn a neural network here, things have started to stabilize. Started the error rate became like really around zero. It's actually not zero. It's like up to 0.4 for this specific use case. We found that for this enterprise, for this set of data, uh, regards of heavy trading, uh, off hours, on hours, uh, actually, the error rate normally is below 0.4, not even a one, below 0.4. But whenever an event like this happens, we see here that that, that very uh, steady, tranquil kind of pace, they shoot up suddenly to uh, the tens here in terms of numbers. Um, here, as, as we're going to see in that other diagram, that's where it's trying to actually predict using these blue lines and the amount of activity and the, the green ones are the actual ones here that uh, we are comparing to. We go back here to the slides to explain uh, the actual story here. So as we saw the model, what the model is seeing actually is the following. Uh, so, but the model is seeing numbers, it's not seeing a visualization. So as we see during the trading hours here, uh, during the business hours, we see all these bursts of activity, each in different color here in the data centers and also at each of these stores that depending on the amount of activity or trading might be wider or narrower. And of course the frequency in itself here is unpredictable, but at the end you saw that they all contribute to really some pattern during this 24 hours. While if we compare this with the off hours here, the off hours would have this kind of like, because there's some machinery and there's some things going on. So there's a little bit of uh, this amount of data that is taking place, but uh, actually it's every few minutes. The interval can be a little bit different, but there's uh, this kind of activities that uh, take place, but at the much smaller uh, scale here. The model that we show actually would look something like this, or this is uh, on, on a smaller scale. So we, we have an input, number of inputs here. Uh, number of inputs can be uh, quite large, depending on how many lines of data, uh, uh, like columns of numbers that you are feeding in. And you can be feeding in all these activity indicators. You can feeding in some relevant data that might impact the amount or volume of trading, supposed to do narratively, like economic conditions for that day, or it can be even the weather data. I don't know. Maybe activity would go up or down based on uh, if it's raining outside or or not, for instance. Uh, then we have uh, the green uh, dots here represent a normalization layer where we take these uh, numbers that can be all over the place and try to normalize them by a factor. So it will be easy on that, especially a new model to get the gist of it, to, to, to get to, to detect and correlate the patterns here. Then we have a fully connected neural network, as you see, and other than the input layer here, we have an output layer. This is the number of columns that are being predicted or inferred here in terms of information. And this specific model would have three hidden layers that keep going in size from very large to smaller. Um, 
Now, what we do with this uh, brain here or a neural network is that first we train the network. So like any new, uh, I'm going to call it employee for the better or, or student, uh, like we feed the books. So we feed larger sets of data here and uh, that, that a new uh, network would try to infer uh, using this output lines here, output layer, and then we compare with reality and the difference between reality and what was inferred is fed back into that neural network into, as a loss. And first is gonna start like it cannot or does not have to please the masters, but then after trials and errors and adjustment to this thousands of different weights and biases is gonna get to a point where it can really produce very little error rate. It can really predict what, what's gonna happen in reality. Then um, every, uh, every course of, of training here, we give it a test. So we give it a different uh, set of data that it hasn't seen before. It's gonna infer something. We compare with reality, the known reality, if uh, the error rate is very minimal uh, and it's steady, then we say, okay, you graduate, you can work on, on real data and real life. Then we put it in production, we run it every few minutes. So uh, it, it sees the data uh, based on how things did look like the past day or two and the past week, the past two weeks, and maybe uh, based on last season. So if we're comparing, uh, let's say, I don't know, and maybe based on, this kind of trading, if it's uh, higher during Christmas uh, season, we compare with uh, what was uh, happening during the last couple of Christmas seasons, for instance. And then we see what's gonna infer for this uh, last uh, 30, 30 minutes or 60 minutes. And uh, then we're gonna compare with the actual. And if if the difference is, is minimal, then life is good. We're gonna yawn and say, okay, life is good. Nobody needs to do anything. But then if the uh, root mean square error is going to jump up high, like what we've seen, then uh, that, that uh, machinery, uh, or that logic is going to alert humans or send some signaling to the decision-making orchestration layers saying, okay, something is out of the norm, close to the narrative. It can be anything. It, it's not going to tell us what it is, at least based on what we have here. It can be anything from a data theft. It can be somebody's or some maliciously trying to simulate a, a large amounts of trades that based on the existing cannot happen in real life, but they can result in large uh, uh, amounts of, uh, of money transfers, for instance. Or it can be some application that is experiencing some difficulty of some resource exhaustion, for instance. Um, so from what we see is that uh, here, if we're trying to predict some last 30 minutes or 60 minutes here, and we are at this point here, we feed to the model the previous 24 hours, we feed to it the prior uh, 24 hours to that last 24 hours to see like from a day to day, are we in, in a trending up or trending down or what's happening these days? Uh, the same day of the week of last week, uh, the same day of the week, two weeks ago, and again, depending on size of your system, how much capacity you have, you might want to feed even more than that. Uh, the more you feed that's relevant, the more resources are going to be consumed, but the better predictability that you're going to get. And of course, with that, better anomaly detection. With that, as we show, so uh, on the root mean square error here, a newborn is going to start with a very high error rate. Then after being fed the books and tested a few times, after a while, a short while, is gonna get to understand what are the tricks being played here. Uh, how the data, like what makes sense here, is gonna adjust its weights and biases, and actually the error rate is gonna uh, be very uh, reasonable and uh, also predictable. Uh, still after that, with hours and days, like any good more uh, operator that's gaining more experience, is gonna uh, achieve perfection, even more perfection gradually. Every now and then, maybe go up or down based on real life experiences, but it's gonna all be within a stable, predictable, low levels. But then actually the best indicator is not actually the root mean square error because it can fluctuate based on the amount of trading. 
is on the uh, uh, time of the day, for instance. Uh, but actually, when we normalize this, so normalized with mean square error by normalizing it as relative to amount of ac real trading activity that's happening, that's where we see that after this initial learning period, it's going to be pretty much below 0.4 here for this specific enterprise. So for this, this becomes the better, the best stability and normalcy kind of indicator for us. And here we see that when something out of the norm that happens, this is one of the examples here, we see that uh, very low uh, stable NRMSE actually the truth up here to the hundreds or even thousands. And when we study for, uh, try to do a root cause analysis for what happened for one of these events, we're gonna see like, here's an example, um, a real example where we had a memory exhaustion issue for uh, a process or some of the processes for one of the applications or only one of the trading outposts. And when that happened here, we see that it did impact the communication right away. It, it didn't go down to zero, but uh, it, it did impact uh, that amount of activity here, uh, almost diminishing uh, suddenly. Um, and this is not expected during the, the trading hours here. Uh, so uh, what happened here is that the responsible system that NRMSE, they shoot up to higher than 430. Actually, a while later, after they did fix a complex issue, they had to reset the whole system from scratch. And when the system started to go back to where it should be and start to function, actually, that even in itself did cause, because that sudden change is uh, not expected for that machine learning model. So that in itself also did trigger again NRMSE to higher than uh, 1450. Uh, so from this, what have we learned? So what we've learned is a number of things. First is that machine learning is very scalable, affordable, and reliable. It's very effective and efficient uh, for monitoring and to detect anomalies in almost near real time. Because if I'm running this model, let's say every 10 minutes, then if something happens, and um, out of the norm, it's very likely I'm gonna get the system to report on it in 10 minutes or less. So that's very good considering the amount of data that's being analyzed here. Uh, but for that also, uh, as we state here, we have to size our system uh, in, in a way that it would make it scalable for the future with minimal amount of interruption and also have some kind of resiliency, maybe run multiple models in parallel or something like that. Because now we become dependent on this machine learning models on that data consumption and any interruption, whether planned or unplanned, can become like, okay, we, we can't see what's happening in the system now because we are learning from all this data coming in from continuity of data as well. And uh, last thing is that, as you said, so the more volume of data that we feed in, and also the variety of different data, but this variety all contribute to what we're trying to predict here, would be good, would allow us for a much better system uh, in terms of uh, uh, monitoring and predictability and anomaly detection. So with this, I'm gonna be uh, looking forward to your questions on the board and discussions and new ideas, uh, happy implementations and uh, Good luck.